It was so much noise you couldn't tell what was going. And I looked over the edge of our scaffold and it was going down the water and the net was coming down on, on up the line because it tore the net loose at the center. Because when they come up here like this was the center of the bridge, you see like that, they come up and they hooked the net and went to the Marin Tower and then they hooked the net and went to the San Francisco Tower. Well, it tore off. The staging, the ocean, the southern ocean corner of the staging started to go down first and that's right where I was standing. So I just went off like a frog into the net, head first. And I think the staging, when it tore loose, it went, one corner went first, I think the men slid off of the staging and then it fell on them in the net. The net stopped them until the staging hit it. So I think uh, most of them were probably badly hurt before I, they ever hit the water. People ask me, what went through your mind? The only thing that went through my mind was survival. I knew that to have a prayer, to survive, I had to hit the water feet first. And I managed to do it. I was hanging on to a piece of net that was hanging on to the staging. I was hanging on to it head first. And before we hit the water, I straightened up, let go of the net, straightened up and hit feet first. The only problem with that, the only problem with that was that I jammed down into that piece of net, both legs way down into that net because it stopped temporarily when it hit the water and I was still moving. And uh, that's the only time I panicked during that whole thing. I was caught in the net and the net was headed for the bottom, uh, dragged down by that six ton staging. I couldn't get loose at all, I was fighting it. And then I finally calmed down and began to wiggle and I slid right out of it. But I was down a long ways because I was bleeding at the nose and the ears when I came up. And we called, a, we called a Coast Guard right away and they came right out. And heck, in a matter of minutes, uh, because we could see these men, you know, a couple of them out there trying to stay up in the water. So I got a hold of him and I got him up on a couple of boards and then I was going to see what I could do for others. But the minute I'd let go of him, the boards would go and he'd start to go down. So I decided, better stick with what you've got, because I knew he was alive. So I stayed with him. The others disappeared. And, uh, but the Coast Guard came out, uh, circled several times, but they never came far enough. They would always get out near me and then turn around, head back. <clears throat> And there was so much debris in the water, it'd be awful hard to see a person floating, you know, just their head sticking up. It'd be a real difficult job to spot us. And he almost went by us, he was some little distance off. I would guess maybe uh, 50 yards from us. And he was almost by, and he took another look around, and his eye hit me. And uh, uh, what a relief, I figured. My gosh, we're going to make it. Then when the crab fisherman came by and spotted us, why well, he, uh, he had an awful time getting Fred aboard and then he had a hard time getting me aboard because I had a broken shoulder and ribs and broken neck and you know, I was a wreck. But he managed to get us into that boat and bring us ashore. <clears throat> and it was too bad Fred died, but that's how it happened. But nobody ever reported it that way. So they put me in an ambulance and they went to, I think it was the third hospital before they accepted me because I was a, a, an industrial accident. And uh, unless you went to the right hospital, they wouldn't touch you. I remember a group of eight men coming in at once. I remember I that. And I remember what a, a trial and tribulation it was to see that they were all cared for because in those days, we didn't have these big emergency rooms, you know, with all this kind of business. When it all went, and I raised my head and looked, and there was two fellows hanging there with, by their fingers on, on the flanges of the beams underneath. One of them hollered, for God's sake, get a rope. And within just about a minute or so, it didn't take long to get them, and we got both of them out. So I jumped up on the big cable, and somebody said, no, the net broke. So I jumped from there back down to the road, and I looked down in a there was a space where the road hadn't been poured yet, it was concrete, and I looked down and there was some man hanging on to the steel. So me and about three or four other men lowered a rope down and pulled him up, and 
the, the man had a pipe in his mouth. He didn't drop the pipe or nothing. He just started to walk towards San Francisco, and I never did see him back there again. You know, eight they never found. They never found the other eight. I only got two of the dead men out. We saved two off the steel, and two came out alive. 